John was not the Messiah. All right? But that didn't keep people from thinking that he might be. He had a huge following. He was extremely inf influential. What he said, people did. When John realized what was going on, he corrected them all. No, no. I, I, I baptize you with water. One greater than I is coming. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. I'm not even worthy to untie his shoes. He is the one you want. You know, that phrase that John used about Jesus, the one greater than I. But it makes us a little bit uncomfortable when we start hearing from the pulpit, from preachers, about wielding power. You know, it's like, whoa, hold on now. I mean, that's almost a taboo topic when you start talking about power, right? It's, it's certainly a, a topic best left for the secular world, for politicians who, who wield power every day. But we have certainly more pious doctrines to discuss on a weekend than that. And to be quite honest, we have a pretty checkered past when it comes to wielding power. Uh, you know, it was one of the biggest problems that really entered the life of Christianity. Uh, and that's when we became the party in power. When Christians finally emerged from their persecution, of first from the Jews and then the Romans... Well, they quickly then abuse their powers as those in authority. I mean, just a, a quick cursory look back in history. When the Christians ruled the world, uh, you know, we controlled everything from military might to governments. We crowned kings and queens. We controlled the land, the money, the taxation. And people suffered greatly physically emotionally, and most importantly, spiritually. You see, the message was changed to suit the party in power. The wonderful good news of Jesus, that there is now a life available to you as a gift, changed to, these are the rules. Obey them, keep them, or else. Even after reformations and internal reforms of the Christian church, there is to this very day no solution to the problem of power and wielding it in the church. There will always be, right, a group that uses its weight, its influence, its money to get its way, leaving the rest of us as the outsiders of the process and the losers of what actually is all going to happen. And it's interesting even today to see how the message always reflects the party in power, be it a confessional or conservative or liberal, a social justice message, who's ever preaching, they're the ones forming the message. In fact, some people have finally just become so disgusted with institutional churches, they just walked away, abandoning the whole institution, leaving it to itself because of its politics and its power plays. But even this self-imposed exile hardly deals with the real issue. See, the, the real issue is that each individual, not the institution, each individual person, young and old, male and female, has a certain amount of power that we all wield. I mean, even the youngest child just throwing a fit in the grocery store is trying to get his way. Smooth-talking boyfriend or salesman or the spouse who's gone on a shopping spree who doesn't share exactly the full extent of what was bought and how much was paid, all of us are using our power either passively or aggressively to get what we want. And 
you're kidding yourselves if you think that there's anything different than this, that power corrupts, right? And absolute power corrupts absolutely. But I'd like to do a little bit of myth-busting right now about power. You see, power does not corrupt. It doesn't have the power to corrupt anybody. But what power is, is the ability to do something. What power enables, then, is us to do what is actually already inside of us. The reason that power corrupts is that the corruption is here, and now it can come out. You see, the problem isn't that our government has too much power, or there's politics in the church. The problem is we're the kind of people who play politics and who abuse our power. And it's so much deeper than the bad things that we do and you can see. It's our very being. We are dead set against God and in open rebellion against His power and being who He is in the position that He has of being in ultimate control over the universe because it really bugs us that we don't have control over our own lives, own time, our own finances. This is the reason that there will never be a permanent and final solution to the problem of power and wielding it by any human being in this room or on the earth. You see, it just, it just doesn't matter who you elect in to fix the government. Democrat, Republican, Independent, it just won't matter because that person is exactly like you and I are on the inside. There is no spouse you can marry who will not be at odds with your power plays because he or she has her own. There are no children who will not regularly challenge your position of authority over them and exert their own will. There is, I know, there is no congregation in West Wichita that you can join or anywhere else that you won't eventually be disappointed, even disgusted by their selfish use of God-given resources, by their cliques, and by their attempts to manipulate your behavior in some way. And you will always be dismayed if you are there long enough and listening of how the message will always reflect the one in power. You see, there is only one, only one who uses all of his power all of the time for your good and your blessing. He has been identified by the Heavenly Father and declared so that we might know who this one is. This is my Son, whom I love. With Him, I am well pleased. This one, Jesus, has been tested in every way and has been found trustworthy, even with absolute power. For He did not turn from His political appointment as Messiah to serve his own agenda. He did not use his powers of divinity to amass wealth or to control the populations to serve him. But he served us, washing our feet, giving up his life on the cross, into death. And having been raised now from the dead, Jesus reigns in the perfect government as our king who will come one day to judge the living and the dead separating the wheat from the chaff which means that there will be a day of justice on the earth a day when everyone's life no matter the race matters before God but the nice thing is it's not only political, or governmental, or institutional. You don't have to wait until the day after you die for the wheat and the chaff to be separated. But it is personal and that your name is known. It is here and it is now because the one who has all power and authority in heaven and on earth 
has declared that this new life in Him begins for you at the moment of your baptism. For He has, ha for he has the power to take you into death with Him and the power to take you into the new resurrected life so that you and I, in our corrupt being that's in rebellion against God, might be dealt with once and for all in that sacrifice, in that death and in that resurrection, we now have a life where we're no longer subject to the slavery of sin like we once were. We're no longer its slave forgiven and set free for the one who has more power, the one who has greater and greatness, now leads us in a life of grace and love in which this new heart and new life truly loves God, not resents, rejoices that He's in the position that He is, gives thanks and praise and worship and due respect and honor. This new life in Jesus He's given us the power to truly love our neighbor as we love ourselves. No longer in a power struggle with our spouse. No long, longer needing to have the last word. No longer must I be right on all things, or at least thought right. No longer do I need all of my things, but I might actually sacrifice my time and my talents and my gifts for someone else. Since you, you have been baptized with the Holy Spirit and fire, since you have this new life in Jesus, I invite you into a daily practice that I do almost every day. I invite you that in the morning, that you take your hand and place it into the water and you place it then on your forehead and you make the sign of the cross and you say in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. It is in this human, daily, regular practice that the Holy Spirit who is in you is training your heart to know the truth of who you are, that you really are, one who belongs to Jesus. And that you would really know where your help and your hope belongs and, and is found. It is found in the one who is greater. It is found in Jesus. I invite you to make that sign of the cross in the morning and join in that training. Amen. The faith into which you were baptized, we now